In the summer of 1998, at the tender age of 19, I worked at a local arcade. Like most arcades at this time, this one was dominated by one-on-one -on -one fighting games like Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter 2. But located in the back corner was a machine that was barely even touched. A side-scrolling naval shooter called In the Hunt. One standout aspect of this game was how completely amazing the sprite work was. Detailed and smooth, this game lingered at the back of my mind for years. It wouldn't be until nearly 18 years later when my friend Ricky would tell me, Hey, did you know that this is made by the same people who made Metal Slug? What? You know what? That makes so much sense to me now. In the Hunt was released in 1993, a full three years before Metal Slug would take the Neo Geo by storm, creating one of the most enduring run-and-gun series of all time. Published by Irem, who is mostly known by way of their arcade shooters, like the iconic R-Type, In the Hunt places you in control of a high-powered attack submarine. Your mission is to take down the DAS, also known as the Dark Anarchy Society. Apparently they've taken over like half the world, and it's up to you to prevent them from gaining control of the rest. Finding and destroying their headquarters won't be easy though, taking you through six levels of intense underwater combat. Starting in the South Pole, things feel pretty straightforward, but once you hit level three, then things become pretty off the wall and nuts. It seems the DAS has some powers of the dark arts under their command, giving them authority over creatures like this giant rock monster. Much like Metal Slug, the very first thing you'll notice about In the Hunt is just how beautiful the sprites are. It really looked like every single frame of animation, and there are an absolute ton, was given their full, undivided attention. Giant bosses, destructible backgrounds, and huge explosions. Seriously, every enemy warship is crafted with a level of care that you don't often see, even 20 years later. Unfortunately, that also leads us to one of the most frustrating aspects. There's just so much graphical information on screen at once that it can be tough to get a feel for what's even happening at times. The screen just becomes so cluttered with different effects that you might lose track of where your submarine is located, and double this when you're playing with two players simultaneously. There's numerous power-ups that are dropped by specific enemies that help keep the enemy siege at bay. Depending on what you pick up, you can create different attacks like super torpedoes and depth charges. However, it can be difficult to hang on to any of these for extended periods of time, because your sub's hitbox is absolutely enormous. Working your way through tight spaces of enemies mean you have to be literally pixel perfect to survive. In the Hunt made its way home to both the Sega Saturn and the Sony PlayStation in 1996. Published in the USA by THQ and Cocopelli Digital Studios, both versions did an admirable job bringing the entire experience home. Strangely, it seems as though both versions were handled by different teams internally and feature a number of differences. For instance, the Saturn version has a pretty crappy CG intro, while the PlayStation version goes straight to the title screen. And shockingly, despite the Saturn's superior 2D prowess, it's plagued with slowdown throughout. In fact, the PlayStation version is considered the absolute best version because there's no slowdown at all. For such a sprite-heavy game, this was certainly not the outcome I was expecting. The PlayStation version was actually released near the start of the console's life, so it showed up in that long box style packaging. It would be re-released in a standard jewel case later on though. All versions feature this super serious quote from EGM on the front cover, claiming, The best way to describe In the Hunt is to combine all the best shooters you have ever played into one game. Now that's a pretty bold statement, and <laughs> one that's completely untrue. I mean, where's the weapon stealing from Guy Ares? The home versions also feature some sweet arranged soundtracks. In fact, both versions' musics are totally different from one another. While I definitely prefer the PlayStation soundtrack, all the songs seem to be played with a sort of mastering error, which causes lots of skips within the tracks. At first, I thought it was my copy, but it was there on others as well. 
So while In the Hunt isn't even close to a perfect game by any means, it's still definitely pretty cool. It still blows me away that I never made the connection between it and Metal Slug, even though I played Metal Slug well before I played In the Hunt. Of course, now that I know this, I'm amazed at just how obvious it is.